Tereda, nice to talk to you today. How are you doing? I'm concerned I'll never have dry underpants again. Uh, <laughs> I looked okay. at the forecast yesterday and ah. it said it was going to be fine. I did my laundry and it's just rained incessantly. So I'm suffering from, <laughs> this is the kind of low level anxiety that I suffer from. It, it could uh, well yeah. be. I, I was just worried when you said you'd never have dry underwear that something else was going on. Medical, no, not. no. It's just, you know, the ordinary weather. domesticity causes me. I, I, try to, I try to have my anxiety based upon things like that as opposed to other things like will I get emails about work and sell tickets and things like that. I can't control any of that, but I can control whether or not my underpants are dry. Um, so respect, no, I'm going to get this retro spectacle, yeah. a part of the comedy a lot fest. Of time on titles. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, and what is that spectacle as in you wear spectacles or spectacle as in the, you know, great event, that, great things is it, or a bit of both? It's a little bit of everything. It's a little bit of, yeah, I, I guess I, I like the concept of spectacle. Um, you know, I got a theater background. I'm, I'm a big fan of. Of, and, and particularly at the moment where everything's digital and distant. Um, it, in fact, just in the last week, I've seen two of the best pieces of theatre I've seen in a really long time. Magical, uh, you know, transformative. And so I love that sense of spectacle. I love the sense of of overambitious projects. Um, I didn't think what I'm doing for the comedy festival is overambitious. I mean, it is a <laughs> retrospective. It's also a spectacle. It's it's retro in that you know what i do is kind of old school to a certain extent um in in a lot of ways so it's 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 each and each and all of those things well yeah but let's look at this so you've got five shows and they're all different yeah so most comedians if they were doing a five night set it'd be the same material to different audiences every night so are you are you a bit of a over worker here? Are you... I, no, I just thought it was a really good idea, and it wasn't. Yeah, <laughs> it wasn't until people started talking about it that I went, oh, oh yeah. So, <laughs> how much prep? How much prep have you done? Quite a lot, and actually, the most difficult part. And so, and so I'm going. You know, so it is a retrospective, um, as well as being the spectacles. So I'm going from from actually the earlier shows. I was thinking about it just just a moment ago, actually. In order of, of thing. so Timor Odyssey, which goes back to that whole, I wanted to be a war correspondent, but do it in a totally different kind of way. That's the first of the shows and technically the oldest, but then I was thinking actually Eating the Dog, which is the second and by far the most performed, it has its basis before Timor right. Odyssey because it began as he taught Eve through Naitahu and the Christchurch Arts Festival. So actually, yeah, the, the shows do span the 30 years and the hardest part of it is is the likes of Antarcticana, Intoxicana and Eating the Dog um, are all full length shows. They're all 90, you know, with an, with an intermission. So, you know, um, and so the hardest part is cutting them down. Because hmm, each uh, one has know, to be an hour, right? Each one's got to be just under an hour. And so it's, it's what do you leave out? And it's, it's always the hardest part of them because I love, there's no content in the shows that I don't like because why would I go on stage and talk about something I wasn't interested in? Yeah. And so the hard part is to go, what are the things that I really love about each of these? So that's where a lot of the prep is coming from. You mentioned earlier about um, aspects of anxiety. Do you get anxiety still? Because you've, you've had a long career. Do you still get it when, before you go on? Or yeah, before you do uh, yeah, I do. And, and I think if, if you don't, you're, you're not paying attention. Yeah. But it changes over the years, like, you know, 30 years uh, of course. I, I've been doing this. It, it becomes a kind of a state of being in a moment before going on. There, there's a process that is there, and that I guess that anxiety it's 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 a it's a heightened state. And it also it also says that this has meaning to you, and that you want to do a good job, and you want to relate to your audience. You want them to have a good time as well. So I guess that's all yes. wrapped up in that. Yeah. Yes, it does. You know. Um, we're the icing on the cake. People spend a lot of money on their events and things like that, and they can be made or broken by what I then do in the next little while. Um, the closest analogy, and I'm not a sports person, I suspect it's like sport. When, when you when you run onto a playing field or, or a court or whatever it may be, um, I'm quite big on looking at becoming a professional mini golfer after I saw that. Maybe <laughs> there is a sport for me, Andrew. You know, you're in well, a, you're I join in a, you. I, I join yeah. you. Yeah. It's it's big. You should you should check it out. It's a, it looks awesome. Oh, you so the, so there's a, it's not just recreation. You're talking about it's actual no, sports. No pro mini do golf. Is yeah, that, really. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Might have to build a course um, yeah, yeah. and practice. Yeah. So it's like that. You're you're in a you're in a place of of being and and for a, for a period of time. I get a sense of you whenever I've seen you. 
<clears throat> is that you enjoy interactions with people. What we're seeing is the, the real you. You're not putting on a, a, a persona in order to yeah. deliver what you need to deliver. And, and I'm assuming and, that's correct. Yeah, it, it's, it's a heightened form of who I probably actually am. And again, yeah. that comes down to laziness. I don't want to put on a character. But it's exhausting, yeah? It's, 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 <laughs> it's exhausting yeah. and it's inauthentic and it's incredibly hard to maintain. If if you're if you're film, filming long form reality television like you know living in a field and you're captured and and you and you film for for eight hours a day of which they might use five minutes what is the moments that you want to have if you're inauthentic or that you, or or, or act, you you can't hide who you actually are and when you're doing long form events over three or four days you can't hide who you are and so it's just easier <laughs> and more fun just to yeah, be to be you you know yeah and it's a huge privilege to still be doing what i'm doing and to be going to these events um and to meet people i really enjoy it um you know so so do you have a uh, a spirituality or a belief about life or a philosophy of life it could be religious it could just be something how, how do you go through the world in that sense oh dear this yeah, is getting, it getting yeah, well, yeah you, you can turn it funny you know yeah no, not as such. I just kind of go from one thing to the next. I'm a huge believer in serendipity mm -hmm. and chance and opportunities. And I'm a huge believer in gateway people. If you are open, you will meet a person who will provide you with right. opportunity. Um, is If that's around saying yes. And I think, I think actually, uh, if there is anything, it, it, it's being relentlessly open to other people and the chances and opportunities they present and that can come from a little conversation each one of these shows that i'm doing has come from a chance conversation with somebody um around something and it has come from somebody offering something um in the from timor odyssey where i was in the bar at the classic and someone offered me the video cameras to go when i said i'm going to go to timor and film a film about the conflict all the way through to cookbookery which is the latest one which came you know from someone um saying hey look wellington on a plate needs some shows and we were talking about something else it was like i wasn't going to do a show about the history of cookbooks as it turns out it's probably one of the most moving and emotional shows that i've, I've done in my career there wasn't a single night in the wellington season where somebody didn't cry what would be your go-to comfort food wiener snitchel really yeah my mum made a very good wiener snitchel um it's and it's I just really like it. Don't have it very often, and it's often done not particularly well. Uh, so, so yeah, thick really breadcrumbs and yeah, yeah, uh, and but it's beef uh, generally, um, and and with some kind of a like a mushroom gravy. Very comforting. Lovely. Hey, great to talk to you. All the best for the show, Thank you. and uh, I guarantee it'll be a sellout. There, take that. Thanks. I did do a show once called will sell out uh oh, to yeah. will sell out um, i did it in a caravan there was only 10 seats a night and it did, <laughs> <laughs> did sell out